Um, well, so, you know, I think we'll just kind of tackle it chronologically because speaking of treats, mm -hmm. so you had a mishap on your bike over yeah. in Kona mm -hmm. and you made a joke about it, you know, you're going for your chocolate, but tell us, walk us through that a little bit and, you know, it didn't sound like it was a bad injury, but... Yeah. So basically what happened is um, I landed on the island on Friday, went for my usual uh, five-hour ride Saturday. Um, probably two and a half hours in, I was ready for a snack. Um, and I went to stop at a gas, well, near Harvey, there's uh, two shops. There's one that I always stop at in the gas station. And I went to turn in at the one we normally stop at. And a friend behind me kind of said, oh, we should stop at the gas station. This one's closed. And I kind of went to answer her. And I, as I was turning, making that right hand turn, I was kind of looking at my shoulder and I hit a bump and my right hand just slipped off. You know, you're sweaty and just like lack of, um, you know, that one second uh, that I wasn't concentrating and just came off. Um, that crash wasn't the issue. Um, that definitely beat me up a little bit. And um, I mean, I was, wasn't going at high speed. I just had a bit of bark off, a little bit sore uh, for a few days as you are after a crash like that. But it wasn't until um, race week um, that I had a second crash, and that was the one that really uh, kind of derailed my Kona campaign, so to speak. So, yeah, I was just riding along Elite Drive Wednesday morning. Uh, very busy Elite Drive um, every year. It's very busy, and I know that, and I'm very careful. Um, but this one was just unavoidable. I was um, obviously in the bike lane riding along. Um, and a car was coming southbound, I was going northbound, and she basically turned into a driveway, so into a hotel driveway, because um, there was a gap in cars, and so she kind of shot the gap to get in there, and there must have been, I don't remember the cars that were beside me before I got to that gap, they must have been big though, because I, I didn't see her until I was basically on top of the car, it was like, you know, I, you know the, all of those moments kind of slow down, and I was like, okay, do I break? No. Can I avoid this? No. And then I was like, okay, I'm going on top of this car. And so, yeah, I got hit uh, from the left side, kind of went up on the bonnet and sort of slid back down onto my feet. It wasn't a terrible hit. Like, I'm so lucky that it wasn't anything worse. If I'm ever going to get hit by a car, <laughs> that's how I'd want it to happen. Uh, just not right before a world championships or really ever, obviously. Um, anyway, so yeah, got knocked knocked off, I kind of picked myself up. It was a massive scene down on Lee Drive. Um, the driver was actually a friend, well not a friend, um, uh, an acquaintance's uh, fiance, one of the pro men's uh, fiancés. And she got out of the car immediately, she was, knew who I was and she was just basically beside herself in tears that, you know, that she'd done this and I was trying to calm her down and then, and then I'm getting upset because I'm like, wow, like I'm really, could be hurt here so I'm sort of trying to figure out if I'm hurt and um, if I'm okay and the general gist that was that I think I'm okay uh, I think I can you know let's just get out of here because this is a crazy scene and I just need to get out of here and assess the damages so um, my bike was a bit messed up I had my friend there and um, actually Julie Divins randomly just turned up a few minutes later who's a great friend of mine and um, it was really good to see her um, to kind of try and help calm the situation down and um, help me fix my bike so that I could get on my way. Um, anyway, I kept riding. I went out and, and rode my bike because I know it's better to keep moving when you're, when you're hit or fall. Um, it's definitely better to keep the body moving, the muscles moving. Otherwise, if you stop right away, you can tighten up. And so I kept riding and I, you know, I had definitely some bruises pretty immediately. Um, but, and my shoulder hurt a little bit, but it, I didn't think anything was serious. And so, you know, I had a full day of media um, <laughs> commitments that day, so um, I continued on my merry way um, and had some treatments uh, a couple of days before the race, but really were focused more on my shoulder because it was kind of swollen a little bit and sore and we were just worried that I wouldn't be able to swim. My back was a little bit sore, but I didn't think too much about it. And at Wednesday, two days out from a big event, you're not really doing too much more work. So um, you're not really going to be able to test your body out properly um, because it was really too close to the race to do any big work. So, yeah, I mean, we got to Saturday morning start day. I thought, you know, my shoulder felt okay. I, I felt like, yeah, I was going to hurt a little bit, but I can get through the swim and didn't even think twice that I'd have any other issues throughout the day. I was tired from the adrenaline of having a crash and, um, and just, you know, that whole week of having one crash and another crash and not super ideal preparation uh, before a world championship, but um, 
still I, I thought I'd be okay I thought I'd be able to get through the day and I thought I still would be able to race um, well enough to have a have a great day so um, unfortunately got out of the swim started the bike and it was pretty evident early on that my um, back and glutes were kind of lock, locking up uh, initially it was my left glute and it kind of moved into my lower back and um, kind of just riding along going nowhere uh, watching a lot of women ride away from me who you know are all great athletes in my own, their own rights but um, on this day I'm very fit and very strong and usually can hold my own on the bike so it was pretty disheartening um, to be out there and just not be able to perform to my abilities um, and so I was battling with myself at that point you know do I continue on I think I can continue on I'm in pain but it's bearable um, or you know do I stop and at that time I was talking to myself I just gotta fin I just finish I'll just finish the race it doesn't matter where I finish um, I should finish if I can finish and that's always been my philosophy um, on racing and, and triathlon if you can finish you do finish unless it's gonna do um, harm to your body so uh, riding along and then I was heading up towards Harvey and um, at that point the pro men were starting to come down and so I was kind of like at that point not really even racing anymore just riding my bike um, because I wasn't physically able to race anymore um, and I saw my husband Tim coming down in the lead and I was just so pleased and surprised and happy for him I shouldn't say surprised but just so pleased to see him because um, normally he's like kind of middle of the front pack but he was off the front so uh, incredible um, for, for him to be able to do that uh, on this world stage with the best cyclists in their best shape so um, then then it came to the, the point where I was like okay I can continue on and finish this race most likely and I don't think I'm gonna hurt myself or I can put my time to better use and I can go and cheer for my husband and at that point I'm like you know what I didn't come here to be a participant I came here to be a competitor and right now I'm not a competitor um, I felt that my time would be better spent cheering for Tim and so so I uh, stopped by the side of the road and uh, fortunately SRAM vehicle was was coming down the other way actually they saw me turned around and um, basically scooped me up and um, brought me home so it was nice to have familiar faces um, take care of me on that ride home because obviously it's very emotional when you're <laughs> just pulled out of this race that you've been preparing for all year uh, but also exciting to see that my husband was doing so well and um, yeah obviously excited for him so trying to put all my energy into focusing on his race um, yeah so they brought me back um, I came back I did an interview with NBC which is going to be terrible because I've just started bawling uh, immediately when they started when they asked me my first question um, and then got out in the course and was able to cheer Tim on and be there for him at the finish line which never happens so it was really nice to be able to do that and see him have such a great day so that's Kona <laughs> in the post-race interview um, Tim talked about seeing you um, there near Javi and he, he knew right away that something something was off yeah and um, you guys seem to seem to have that you just you just know know right away and you knew right away that he was having a yeah. good day um, has that has that happened before um, I think with I mean you can't we kind of know just the sport so well and we know how good each other are you know I know how great he is and how great he can be and, and vice versa so um, you can read a situation very quickly um, and I'm sure you know when he saw me pedaling up Harvey I didn't look so great and and I you know with him off the front um, I knew that he was having a great day so yeah I mean it's I think just being in the sport for so long and knowing each other so well you kind of just you know immediately whether it's a good day or a bad day we're a team and we have two chances to do well in Kona um, and as much as we're individual athletes we really do celebrate each other's victories and 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 um, commiserate when uh, we have bad bad days too but um, this year was about Tim he had a fantastic race he got third and, and I think more importantly proved to himself that he can win this race and that's the bigger picture thing here um, you know I always believe that he could win but for him to have that belief is something else entirely so um, yeah it's ex 
to look forward to the future, we have some exciting opportunities. Mm -hmm. when, um, when you decided to call it a day, um, I know for age groupers, there's, a, there's officials who you, know, you take your timing chip off and they have to ask you a certain series of questions. That, is it the same for a pro? Or is it, is it more casual? I'm, I don't really pull out that often. I didn't know I what to do. do. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, that, you, that this was a new experience. Yeah, I, didn't, I honestly, I didn't know what to do. I, um, I kind of was slowing down and pulling over to the side and a draft marshal came past and I said, what do I do if I want to stop? And she, she actually didn't speak great English, I don't think. Um, but she's like, oh, just go to the next aid station, I guess. And so I'm like, okay. So I kind of carried on and then, and then I, so I was just about to get to an aid station, so I stopped, and that's when the SRAM guys came and saw me, and they, basically they just said, are you okay, what can we do, and they didn't ask me any series of questions, but um, yeah, I kind of knew that it was game over. Then they called in uh, the race referee, and I saw Jimmy Riccatello out on the course, and he just <laughs> took one look at me and, and said, gave me a fist bump and said, you'll be back next year, and that's kind of how it went down. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the general feeling um, from most people has, has been, you know, you'll be back next year and you'll be better for it. So well, that remains to be seen, but um, I sure hope so. Mm -hmm. Definitely gives me an extra year of fuel uh, for 2016. Mm -hmm.